What's up guys, YST here and welcome back to another Raid Shadow Legends video and for the 600th video on my channel, we've got a special <laughs> guest you could never guess. No Raids, how's it going bro? <laughs> hey, it's great to be on. Congrats on 30k subs by the way. Oh yeah, thank 36. you. I appreciate you it. You beat me, darn. Oh, you beat me. You'll, get, you'll get to 40k before me now. <laughs> uh, we'll try, but I don't know. <laughs> Uh, but yeah guys uh, basically what we're going to be doing today and why we've got this um, handsome fella on the channel is we're going to be speaking about our best champions for Bumble the Dreadhorn in this day and age because I'm sure you can agree there's been a lot of new ones that's been added to the game and they're just phenomenal right and some of them in this team as we're speaking. Yep, exactly. I feel like there's kind of like an element of power creep isn't there in the game at the moment? Yeah. Like... I don't know, like a while ago when a Chrissy was added to the game, I was like, man, this champion is just on another level. Nothing's going to compete. I, I kind of feel like now when I was thinking about some of these videos, like, man, like there are champions like uh, another certain dwarf who's there in the background that like, yeah, suddenly, suddenly things aren't as dramatically split as they once were. It's, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. No, I was just I'm going through here, right? And I'm like, wait a second. I am getting messed up with this intro. What a bad oh. YouTuber I am. Didn't prepare properly. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, we're trying to salvage it just so we can get For, one little win forgot the preset <laughs> we've got no increased attack no. oh we got well, this we're talking we're talking about the best champions for Bomb of the Dreadhorn guys in case we didn't say <laughs> <laughs> we somewhat know what we're doing yeah we that's right that's right we got this uh -huh. we got it's this guaranteed to work 100% of the oh, time if you no. follow this list nothing no. can possibly go wrong nothing's 100% win rate Oh god, here we go. We're scared. Sixty percent of the time, oh, it works every we time. We lost. We lost. It's not over yet. Oh, oh, it's not over till oh. the fat lady sings. I must have had the wrong presets. The dread bombs are gonna proc. <laughs> oh my god. I believe. I believe. We got not even close. We got this. We got we this. Got this. Here uh, we go. Oh my god, we need to take a turn. An easy win. Yeah. See, all we have to do is bring in Kanjafon, guys, with a five star blessing, and you saw it. So there is never, never any doubt. He better be number one on your list now. <laughs> yeah, I was having my odd presets. But yeah, okay. Let's head straight into this then. So when you're talking about Bommel, what is your favorite? Well, not your favorite. Who's in your favorites, I guess? Okay. Well, my number one, we just saw him in action there. It's got to be Nishak, Vermin Lord. Mm -hmm. He is the best bomb champion in the game for Bommel. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, it's like we were talking about how things have changed, right? Bommel came out. We're like, oh, he's weak to bombs. That's going to be mm -hmm. the way to beat him. Turned out, no, it wasn't at all. And nobody used that for ages, apart from maybe a couple of people with astrolytes and stuff. Yeah. But uh, then Nishak came along and everything changed. The world opened up. The world was a better place once again. But yeah, he just pumps out so many bombs. He's the right affinity for the boss. Even has some AoEs to help you with the waves and mm -hmm. AoE bombs even to help you with the waves. Uh, yeah, he's just fantastic. And I think the great thing is you just build him high attack and accuracy. He absolutely rinses Bommel. Mm -hmm. And he's still a fantastic champion to bring into Arena as well. Basically the same build. So, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, he's my favorite. He's got to be number one for me. He's just, yeah, no, 100%. He's, he is the bomb. Yeah. So basically, guys, for anyone that wasn't aware, like if you head into the boss guide on the um, in game itself, you can see that Bommel receives 300% more damage from bomb debuffs. And this is where someone like the Nishak Vermindor comes into effect to deal that double damage, which is basically the one of a kind in this game. Like, there are some other options we'll speak about in this video, but that's basically why he comes as that number one spot. It's just the way that he can scale and also the amount of bombs you can pop out. So, yeah, Mr. Nishak, we love you, buddy. <laughs> um, so, for a very similar reason, we've had the implementation of a new bomb epic, and she goes by the Ooh. name of Firegun Isbel. And Firegun is, she really blew me away. Like, I read a kit straight away, like, my head just goes to two places, and it's Clan Boss or Bomb. Because <laughs> <laughs> the only two things I think about. So, when I see it, oh, like, Reads in a similar way, we've got like um, deals 50% more damage. I was like, ooh, like budget Nishak vibes. So basically, she's got like a five multiplier with the bombs. I believe it goes up to like a 7.5 and scales very well against the boss. And then also, if if the, all the targets that you're facing is like in front of you, you can place a weaken. She leads him with an extra turn mechanic and then boom, place the bombs, amplify them. And then, you know, that's basically all you need it for. And one thing that I really like about like these bomb champions is we don't usually have like a need for attack percent on our gauntlets or attack on our yeah. amulets. And it's like you start to think like, oh, this piece might be good for like one of these <laughs> between us. So yeah, no, she's she's phenomenal, man. She's up there for me. I really like her. Yeah. I've got so many attack amulets for factions that don't even have a bomb champion just waiting. <laughs> just waiting for a bomb champion <laughs> to come waiting. out. Yeah. Yeah, right. 
All right, my next pick. Oh, you're in the right faction. Go back. Oh, there we oh. go. Let's go. My next pick is going to be Geomancer, actually. Ooh, um, the OG. It's like the old school, right? This was, for me, before I got Nishak, this was the guy, right? This mm -hmm. is the guy. Probably everyone, everyone watching probably knows how OP Geomancer is. Ultimate boss killer, and he's fantastic for Bommel as well, right? You slap that burn on, he starts reflecting all the damage back, right? The bombs are exploding, the dread mm -hmm. bombs, he's reflecting it back. Brilliant. It's just keep him alive. And Geomancer will kill the boss with all that reflecting very quickly yeah. as well. So, uh, yeah, I think he's got to be top tier pick for damage. Like, if you don't have these bomb options, bam. Uh, yeah. Yeah. There's this crazy strategies that I've seen some people who do. I think you did a video on this as well, right? But you have like four yeah. Bogoths and like, oh. this is Geomancer, and it's just like he's... dread bombs are procking up everywhere. Oh, oh God's <laughs> coming up on the list in a minute. Oh, wait, we didn't say Bogoth. We said um, no. uh, uh, a Pudoff. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god you've been picking up too much from your dog recently <laughs> yeah no but i agree geomancer is like one of those um really cool ones if you don't have like those speed farm bomb strategies he's like the next thing that you look towards right mm -hmm. um so next up we're going to be going into um, do you know what? i'm going to get my bomb champions out the way first i'm going to go with okay. warmother now the, the bad thing with War Mother is she's the wrong affinity, right? She's magic, there's that RNG element. But the one upside is in the Doom Tower, you don't lose your keys by resetting your battle. So mm -hmm. if you could basically just go through, get the RNG that you need and pair it with these other champions, like she really is phenomenal. Like I did a team with, well, another champion we we're going to mention on the list, uh, War Mother and then a Fire Gun Isbel. And we one shot the boss the same way that I would do with Anishak Vermin Lord with those two together. So nice. the one downside of her is she's, although that she scales a hundred percent against bosses, it reads in this way. Basically, she's got a, <laughs> she's got a five point five multiplier, but once it scales, it's only an eight point five. So maybe the people yeah. over at Raid don't know how to do like simple maths, but that's not hundred percent to me. So <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, right. <laughs> but uh. overall, it's still really good. Like she still sits like a one multiplier above someone like a Fire Gun Isbel, which is actually still very decent against this boss. So yeah. yeah. I like her. And she's got she's good for the waves as well. Uh, we've got some instant detonations and stuff. So, yeah, I like War Mother. I think she uh, they should buff her up so it actually does do double damage. Uh, she's a great champion yeah. for Hydra, like normal and hard as well. Mm -hmm. The bombs actually do a ton of damage. Um, so yeah, it's a pretty viable strat now that you can provoke and stop the cleanses. So Maybe yeah, no, she's right. I don't know what else I'd put in a kit like apart from like the multiplier change. I think the yeah, one, I, the I, one I just thing just I don't the like bombs hit harder. Why not? Yeah, I, I'm not sure how I feel about this champion needs to increase attack to detonate. I've never liked that. Yeah. Do you know the one time where mm. I actually felt this is when we did the faction games, right? And I was trying to do like a bomb thing against the Fire Knight. And I was like, right, right. Oh, it's right. like you could detonate the first <laughs> wave and then you haven't got increased attack on the next wave and it falls off because the cooldowns on this one is a four turn and then this one's like a three turn and sometimes it falls out of sync. So gotcha. it's a weird cycle. Yeah. But we love her. All right. Uh, my next pick, I haven't tried him yet, but I'm obviously extremely excited to try him. And I saw that you are using him. It's Newt from the Dwarves. You got uh, it again. On, we got it on both collabs, guys. We did the Dark Fate video did. on Love's channel, and then... Yeah, <laughs> he's in there. <laughs> I mean, I'm not joking, like, Matt. He is in, I think, three out of four of my hard mode dungeons. Mm -hmm. uh, this guy, he just makes it in everywhere. He's so, so strong. Uh, but yeah, Newt comes in, and again, I think for killing the boss, right? Mm -hmm. That A3... Push it, uh, just the max HP damage that he does. That's super, super strong. Maybe can help you stay alive with the A2. Also makes bombs stronger with the weaken. Mm -hmm. I mean, the only thing I'm worried about is the A1 is going to spawn a heck of a lot of Like Dread we bombs. just seen in the intro, right? Like, yeah, yeah so... It's, it's, it's but I, I, I do think that, you know, for killing the boss consistently and quickly, I think his A3 is just so ridiculously good. Mm -hmm. He is most likely going to make it into a lot of the top teams. I'm very excited, like I said, for the Dark Fae to try him there. He's definitely top tier there. Yeah. Pretty sure he'll be good for Bommel too. He's yeah. the right affinity as well. So He's phenomenal we'll for Bommel. Like, the one thing that I kind of, I'd recommend is like, if you're doing the higher floors and you're banking on a strategy that needs multiple turns and you haven't got like mm. resets in the team, I'd probably think about taking accuracy off uh, personally. Um, unless Ooh, you pay yeah. Unless you've got like a Geomancer and like the other um, Pugoffs in the team. Like, <laughs> Poo -poo, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to survive. <laughs> uh, then basically like if, <laughs> once these start dropping and those dread bombs come, you're going to get slaughtered, right? But, you know, if you're going for like those quick farm strategies, you've got a reset in there, you've got a new, some other bomb champions. Like sometimes all you need is just that initial max HP and then the rest to finish up the job. So, and that is really good. Cool. 
Um, and next up for me, we're going to talk about more tra um, traditional strategies now, like, you know, taking it back a little bit. Um, we're going into the high elves, and it's going to be to tour Rhymehide as my example. Now, the fundamentals of someone like to tour is, is decrease accuracy. And basically, like, those thresholds of the boss are insanely high. And once you've got, like, some increased resistance and resistance on your stats, you're going to want decreased accuracy to be able to resist the bombs coming your way. And um, what better one than someone like Tatoa, right? Of course, you could use other options, but having a 100% chance on a default skill is really hard to find, especially at, di at this affinity where you can get those weak mm. hits from the boss as well. So, yeah. I guess, like, the main thing to take away from this one is decreased accuracy is very, very valuable, um, regardless of who you bring in, right? It's a great pick. I like it a lot. Okay. Uh, my next one uh, is poo-poo. Okay. I pick, I pick a poo-poo. Okay, here he comes, guys. You ready for the poo-poo? Poo here he is. <laughs> <The> poo <-poo. laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, he's just, you know, really just a big, thick, green one. He's like, clinching his fists. He's eat? ready to smack you up. He's like... It's all green. Like, how much spinach have I eaten? What is going on? Um, no, uh, but Vogoth. Uh, yeah, in case you guys don't know. Yeah, I do. I think I do have videos of, like, triple Vogoth. But his passive, uh, it heals you for damage that this champion takes. How this works so well against Bommel, right? Bommel spawns in Dread Bombs, and you could even do strategies with someone like Physics or Newt, somebody that does turn meter pushback, spawn in loads of these Dread Bombs, but then when they're exploding, if you stack multiple Vogoths, he actually will just heal your team to full every time a bomb goes off. So instead of being this super dangerous thing that could wipe you, mm -hmm. suddenly these bombs become just big sources of healing, and it's just fantastic. So... And yeah, all the multiple Vogots are all going to heal each other, so it all sort of cancels out. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just a phenomenal way to get through. You need multiple copies. You need lots of them. Even one can help you, though. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's, it's just such a, a cool strategy. It's just ridiculous. Uh, and yeah, Vogot. Yeah. Super good. It's phenomenal. Like the, like, the one thing that people don't really realize is that the Dread Bobs aren't the boss. Bomb was the boss, right? So That's like, right. Um, so you're getting the full 50% value from this 40% max HPs. So you're basically surplus <laughs> healing from Vogoth. Um, but yeah. then once you've got two of them, it's like they're healing each other and then no one dies. Uh, but you, obviously you can still take a lot of damage from bombs and stuff, but like, it really is a big clutch. Like, I, without Vogel for a long time, I couldn't beat Bommel. I was struggling. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Yeah, he's a game changer. Yeah. So um, next up for me is going to be... Ah, it's a tough one, you know. Um, <laughs> I'm thinking, it who do tough. I think is the best of the best? Right. I'm going to go with Rector Droth okay. from, the, from the Knights Revenant for this next one. Now, Rector Droth, like, for those traditional teams, it's like she's got this amazing Master of Ghost passive where whenever an ally is under a Veil or Perfect Veil buff gets a turn, heals them by 10% of their max HP and also increases their resistance for allies under those conditions. So not only are you getting the damage reduction from basically having the Perfect Veils, but you're also amplifying your resistance with a Resist Aura, and also she's a great healer with a Decreased Attack option as well, and a Reviver. So like when you're pairing the with these Vogoths, all these geomancers, and you're ramping up these high resistance stats, like you don't, there's it's like a no-brainer but to bring someone like Rector Draft into the team. And I actually choose her over someone like a Duchess in my um teams that I've used in the past because of that. Have you used her in your teams? Uh no, actually. You I haven't. Never, I no, I don't think I did use Rector Draft. No. But uh, I obviously I yeah. can see the appeal of it for sure. It's an intensive yeah. team, like I will say that, but of course, mm. like Bomber is an intensive boss. But like it, yes. what I used to do was is like I'd have like a tutorial rhyme high high resistance. But of course, we've mm -hmm. got decreased accuracy, so we're leaving so much of that. And then I would have Rector Draft with the aura and then also the extra 50. And basically everyone gets 105 resistance for free. It's like happy days. Yeah. And then if you start yeah, bringing in big. increased resistance <laughs> as well with like some of these new champions, it's like, you know, yeah. it'll, be, it'll be a pretty good time to face this boss. But I hear you. I hear you. Let's actually, you know what? Let's stick with that theme, man. My next pick's going to be Oella. Let's Yo, do this. I was, hope, I was hoping you was going to say this. Let's do it. Yeah, so Oella, now, she is the wrong affinity. However, this champion is very tanky, very easy to build her to be survivable. But she comes in, she's got the three-turn cooldown, increased resistance with turn meter, and then she has a ton of healing, plus, uh, you know, buff extension as well. Mm -hmm. So... This is massive, again, to build that sort of team you were talking about where you're manipulating the boss's accuracy. You slap decreased accuracy on him, increased resistance on your team. Oella can keep that up 100% of the time. 
the boss cannot remove any of your, your buffs, right? Or turn them into bombs. He can't place bombs on you, I think. Hey, does he maybe have some that are irresistible? I don't even know right now. But <laughs> o- Oella's going to heal up all the direct damage, that's for sure. Yeah. It's just tons of healing for your team and one of the best resist increasing champs in the game. So yeah, and she was a fusion too. So a lot of people are going to have her. Yeah. Uh, I think she's got to be like an MVP. I think it's resist aura. No, I think it's only for dungeons, actually. Is it? Dungeons by 75, yeah. yeah. So can't use that, but still. Like she if you think about like even pairing amazing. her with a Rector Draft as well, it's like <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's right? That's a brilliant combo. Yeah, Rector Draft to Tor, Rhymehide, Awella, Geomancer, yeah. <laughs> and a Bogoth. You'll be living life. <laughs> yeah. Cool. yeah. <laughs> I wish I had a Wella. Like, it's one of those champions that I just she was she a fusion? No. Yeah, yeah, she was. Yeah. She was oh, I missed up. I, okay. We were talking about this on stream today, because uh, we talked about Razzle Varg in the, the, the Dark Fae video. But I thought Razzlevark might be the most underrated fusion of all times. He's up there. But I think Oella, someone said it, and I have to agree, in terms of fusions, I think Oella was the most underrated. A lot of people slept on the increased resistance. And just I guess what it was, it's like, how many places in the game do we require yeah. increased resistance? I think that's what people were basically trying to say. Mm. But then in the grand scheme of things, like for the mass player base, in these kind of scenarios that we're speaking about, like, you know, it's very powerful. Like, even for Hydra boss, right? Like, yeah. It's, I've used her for Hydra. Yeah. I, know, I know Saf uses her for Ice Golem. Like, mm-hmm. this champion is... She just keeps being an MVP in loads of places. I think I, uh, my hatred for Alton of the Shell get to me, so I didn't want the yeah, kind of That's what it was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did, yeah. you, did you win him in the champ trading tournament? No, um, I didn't even bother, man. Nah, uh, neither no, neither did I. No, I think I tried a little <laughs> bit, and then I looked at him, I was like, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. Yeah. And I left it. Um, there you go. So yeah, um, next up for me here, we're going to be going into... Do you know what? I'm going to throw a little cheeky rare in there. I think he's worth mentioning. I'm going for Ooh. Master Butcher. Now, to pair up with those uh, Poo Poo Head Vogoths, um, <laughs> his heat exchange, when attacked will heal all allies equal to the amount of damage taken, does not work against bosses. But once again, um, the Dread Bombs are not the boss, right? And this is on That's a right, one-turn yeah. cooldown. Like, it's phenomenal. Like, once you start pairing them together, he's also got, if he dies... Um, Provides a random ally with full HP when his champion is killed. And that's basically all you're using this dude for. It's just a passive. And I know many people that were struggling with the boss. They threw him into the team. And it was like that tipping thing that they needed for victory. So I think he's probably up there as the best rare in the game for Bomb of the Dreadhorn. Yeah. Yeah, he's got to be. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll go with a safe pick again. You mentioned her already, but Duchess Lilithu. I think mm-hmm. she has to be in a list of top champions for this boss. Yep. I mean, you might have heard of Duchess a little too before, people watching. Uh, yeah. Yeah, she's, uh, she's pretty good, right? She's pretty Wait, good. You've got yours, she's... right? You've got yours. Oh, totally. I've got three yeah. of them. Oh, uh, yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah, like you. Easy. Uh. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I still don't have one. Still don't have yeah. one. Uh, grass is always greener on the other side. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, speaking of green, she's green affinity. It's the right affinity. So, And she's super tanky. Very easy to keep her alive, reducing mm-hmm. the AoE damage you take with the passive. She comes in with the A we revive. So, you know, so long as she's alive, she can pick everyone back up. She brings increased attack as well uh, to empower any of those bomb champions you're bringing in, which can be mm-hmm. great. Uh, the block debuffs can stop the burn, which makes the bombs do more damage too. So, yeah, she's just a great champion to go in, be tanky, keep your team revived and going, and yeah, just beat the boss down slowly, as it were. So, I think Duchess, she's got to be in in the list for top champs for this yeah i did use it for a while but i think it was mainly for affinity like do you want to just yeah. cheesing your way through like please don't place a bomb yeah. on duchess that's what it was about <laughs> for me i was like oh please please yeah, right. then... now she's, she's really really good and then that clutch revive it's just like if you don't have that high resistance teams you can get a bit weary when you're placing like multiple buffs it's like you're getting bombs all over the place but if you're yeah, getting those strategies yeah. then you know it's worth use, utilizing those kind of buffs there um mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm trying to think of who else do I really value. Like, there were some strategies where, like, obviously there's champions such as Gaius the Gleeful, right? Uh, Mm -hmm. But the thing is, these champions don't scale to, like, double damage and stuff. And I think the only one that's worth mentioning that's not, like, an extra scaling, apart from War Mother, um, Fire Gun, and Nishak, would be um, Astrolith. Where is she? Mm -hmm. Uh, Is she a Dark Elf? Oh, she's a Dark Elf, yeah. I just got her as well. So excited. Going to be using her this rotation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so what makes her so cool is, is that she places two bomb debuffs that detonate after one turn, and this debuff cannot be resisted, meaning you do not need accuracy to place these bombs. And why that's so important to note is you could just ramp up her attack stats all the way through the roof and not have to have a care in the world for the accuracy on this <laughs> champion. So I think that's like 
really cool, right? A scarcity factor. No one else really works like this from the bombs in the game um, to literally mm. require no accuracy and just attack percent. So I'm really looking forward to using it. I'm going to go Nishak, Astrolith, um, mm. Newt, and who else oh. would I bring in there? I don't what, really want... Fire gun? I, <laughs> I, I don't have a fire gun. I didn't get an extra copy. Oh, man. I've got bloody three of them because I messed up the fusion. And I, oh, I you, you, don't, you don't got a trunk heart? Oh, damn. No, no. I was asleep and I, I slept through Artifact Enhancement 2 or something stupid like that. Oh, man. That's <laughs> yeah. brutal. You, you get to the end and you're like, where's the last 25 fragments gone? <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny because you do those fusion plans with all the art boards. Come I know, on. I know. And then you're like, gosh darn, social life. I think I was like, what, family events, like Saturday, Sunday over the weekend and completely forgot <laughs> to play. Like, How dare you see your family yeah, with a fusion on love? Disgusting, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, yes. Did you have anyone else here on your list? Yeah, I, I have a couple. Uh, yeah. So one that's near and dear to my heart, Mother Cybelle. Ooh. Um, so this know, is. I, I was gonna say this one. And I was like, do you know what? This is yours. <laughs> this is your one. Go for it. Yeah. It's actually, I think I was, one of the original people to come up with the strategy, yeah, I think. Yeah, it was one of the um, first things that I've seen from you. Yeah, yeah. That really, like, <laughs> like, because I remember you did the Hydra stuff and that, and then when you did this one, I was like, that's yeah. such a, because I love Bommel, right? And when I seen his strategy, I was like, hmm. it's quirky, man. And it made me think of some stuff as well. But yeah, go for yeah, it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's so hard to come up with it's any hard. original strategies in this game. Yeah. So this one is near and dear to me. But yeah, Mother Cybelle, because she brings in uh, Revive on Death, Honor mm -hmm. A2. Uh, plus then she brings in the speed aura as well, which is really helpful. We talked about this in Dark Fae video. I don't know if you mentioned it here, but you know, getting enough speed to keep up with these bosses at the top of Doom Tower. I believe hard, it's uh, 250 uh, for Bomb 90, right? Something yeah, like that, it's, yeah, it's that's difficult. That speed aura, it does help a lot. But yeah, the revive on death, it lets you basically get past these bombs, right? Yeah. You die to all the debuffs and revive on death picks you back up again. Um, so, you know, it's more of a manual run, but you only need to beat Bommel once every three months and you're good. Yeah. So you get that in and, uh, yeah, I think it's a really fun strategy to get through and it's very satisfying as well to like cheese it basically with revive on death. Um, so yeah, I, I think she's great for that. Really, really good. Yeah. It's a, it's a risky strategy. When you're looking at it, you're like the edge of your yeah. seat, like, oh my God, what's happening? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's a bit of an adrenaline rush. Yeah. I who like who it. else did you implement into the team with her in terms of like the DPS? Do you, can you recall it? Uh, Oh gosh, I think it was probably Geomancer. Was it Geomancer? It's, almost, it's, it's pretty much got to be Geomancer. You're like right? dro you're dropping the dread bombs and it's like revival and deaths and killing. Yeah, them. it's just, it's just like yeah. triggering loads of dread bombs. They're just exploding like crazy. We're surviving the bomb debuffs with revive on death. Yeah, I think Vogoth was there. Poo 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 head was uh, yeah. healing us up from the the, <laughs> the the dread bomb explosions and yeah, it's just it's just a nonstop explosions. Everyone's dying and popping back up and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, it was uh, it was fun. It was fun. That's cool, man. <laughs> Um, so I guess the next one for me, this is for people that's progressing, right? This one's for you guys. It's my secret strategy. Make sure you don't oh. tell anyone. This is for, you know, people that took the time. <laughs> don't tell anyone, Nubs. Uh, okay, okay. <laughs> it's, it's not that deep. <laughs> it's Soul Drinker. <laughs> now, now, Soul Drinker, he's like, some people look at him as like the like weird looking Mortimer Macab, but he stands mm -hmm. as his own champion. He's really good. So basically what he does is he attacks all enemies two times. Each hit has a chance of placing a bomb debuff that detonates after three turns. So with each hit placement at 100% chance, that's two bombs, right? He's mm -hmm. also got decreased the bomb detonations, which is decent, but the boss takes extra turns anyway. You'd have to really care about that. And then also the same thing on the A1. But basically I made a video, I think about a year ago now, called You Die, You Win. And that was basically the strategy. <laughs> so you basically build up multiple soul drinkers, right? Like two or three or whatever. And then you basically place the bombs off the bat with the increased attack and weaken, then let them die. And then they'll basically like place another two bombs when this champion dies. And then you bring them all back again with like a God Seeker, like an instant turn again. It was, it was crazy, nice. man. But it's hard <laughs> to make it work on like stage 90. I've done it before with Gaius, sold two soul drinkers and someone else, but it was really good RNG. But yeah, yeah, if we're yeah. like up until floor 50, the strategy is nuts, man. So if anyone else is like normal, just progressing for like the mid stages, it's like, it's, it's fun to watch. You'll enjoy it. Mm. Have you seen that? Okay. Have you seen that video? I actually don't think I have. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've heard of the Soul Drinker strats or stuff. Like I've seen him in arena as well. Yeah. You know, he's such a fun champion, but uh, I think yeah. I actually missed that one. I'll, cool. I'll go back and I'll watch it. It's his reviews. Oh, look, people seem to like him. Yeah, oh, they nice. like him. Ah, he's, he's a good champ. He's a good champ. He's a good champ. All Right, so I think I only have one pick left, okay. or at least if we're sticking to our original list. And yep. we've mentioned her a couple of times, so she has to be in the list, really, at this point. It's Godseeker and Eerie. Mm -hmm. um, she really has to make it in. Just what an amazing epic. One of the best in the game. 
Uh, but yeah, she comes in. She's actually pumping out a decent amount of healing for your team with her A1, her A2. And then, yeah, she's got that big single target revive, brings them back with cooldowns ready to go. That is so useful when you're running stuff like Soul Drinkers or Geomancer. You know, most of the strategies you might be using, maybe even Newt might be going in and dying. You bring him back and yeah. boom, he goes in with his max HP again. Could be great. And then her pass, uh, her passive has that revive on death as well. So bringing people back from the brink. So yeah, two different sources of revive, lots of healing. Uh, yeah, she's just a, a really great champ uh, to, to bring in. I used her as well, I think. Yeah, great for passive uh, healing and everything. Yeah, she's phenomenal, man. Mm. I was trying to think of when I did I use... I'm pretty sure I used it in a weird strategy with the... Um... I was thinking, like, weirdly, this is what happens to me in Bob. Like, now you've got me thinking of strategies. <laughs> now, I was thinking of, like, with Vulcan, like, doing a new, using Vulcan to kill the new, and then using oh, Godzilla wow, wow. to reset the cooldowns of the new. And then it's like, do you know what I mean? It's like some I like weird it. cycle. Okay. And then, then use someone else, like, white dry near to reset the Vulcan to kill the new to the reset. I don't know, man. Okay. What's wrong okay. with you? <laughs> this is what happens to me at Bobo, man. He gets, yeah. he gets me these yeah. feelings. <laughs> you ever seen that that meme where it's like the couple in bed and she's like, is he thinking of other women? And it's like, why is he just thinking of Bobo? <laughs> Someone's going to make that now, for God's sake. <laughs> All right, guys. So just a little bit of a sidetrack from the original video. Whilst I was editing up, I realized that there was a few MVPs that I felt should really be making this list. So we're going to demonstrate a couple of them and then also discuss a few more in the index. And, you know, let's just get straight into this. And two of them is going to be Marishka the Unbreakable and then also Yumiko. Now, they are Void Legendaries, but they definitely have to be spoken about as some of Bommel's MVPs because the way that Yumiko can utilize the Hex debuff on her A2 to basically reflect the protected bombs back to the boss is phenomenal and one of a kind because it kind of happens before the bombs are placed on you. Therefore, you can reflect those back. And then also Marishka stands as a very strong support option that can also place a block damage upon bombs being placed on yourself. And I just feel like that's amazing. And then also when she dies, she kind of brings back everybody else that was slaughtered. So if the dread bombs happen to kill your allies and you pair her with another reviver, for instance, to keep reviving her, you could basically go back and forth and keep surviving the onslaught from the dread bombs themselves. So hopefully you can see a bit of that in action right now in this team that I just quickly put together. Um, we're on floor 50 at the moment. I'm not all the way up until stage 90. But this kind of team will still work for the highest thresholds of this boss. So come on, Vogoths. Um, we're also going to be using the Vogoths that we mentioned earlier. Utilizing their passives to basically counter the 40% max HP hits from the Dread Bombs. And once we start pairing two together, it's just going to be a phenomenal thing. And we're hardly ever going to die. And then we've got Geomancer to reflect those burns back to the boss as well. It's actually pretty cool that we've got the reset from Yumiko for the waves too, so we can kind of use the provokes and just keep the waves under control, right? All right, here we go. More provokes coming through. All right, just these final hits and then boom. So once we come up against the boss with the presets, we're using the hex, right? And as you see here, the bombs are getting reflected back to the boss. Now watch when he, watch when he actually takes a turn, how much it comes into effect. The burns are weakening are going live. Right, we received a bomb debuff, therefore the block damage has been put up. But sometimes it's basically whenever he's just doing his initial phase, right? We're dropping all of those dread bombs because we do want to reflect the burns back to the boss and we've got the Vogoths for our protection. But hopefully we can see Marishka die and everybody else die. I'm not too sure if we will on stage 50, but here we go. Watch this. Boom. Five bombs placed straight onto the boss and now... Once that was on our champions, it's been sent straight back to him, right? Well, most of them anyway. Now, one downside is Termia Reduction, very similar to the new. It's going to keep dropping those Dread Bombs, which is a little bit tedious. But in a strategy like this, where we've got the protection around her, this is where it all comes to fruition. So here we go. Look at this. We're hardly taking any damage because of those passives. Those Dread Bombs can keep procking. It's not a problem. Here we go. Look at that. And now we've got some block damage on, so when these next Dread Bombs proc, we're going to be able to survive the Onslaught. On some of the allies anyway. But here we go. And here comes Marishka with those full heals, the strengthens, some damage protection. Bombs procking off again from the Reflections. And I believe that he's just about to cycle his skill again with the Rain of Bombs, so we can send more back to him as well. Ooh. It looks scary, but we've got this under control, guys, in this kind of synergy. 
We still got the bombs active or the burns active, sorry. So we should still be reflecting a lot of burns. Boom, more bombs going out. We got the block damage up now. Look at this. Self sailing team, but just looks scary. <laughs> That's the only way to um, describe it here. All right, strengthen and heals going back out again. Decrease accuracy as well. Pretty decent for someone like a Marishka, who I traditionally like to build in my high resistance. A few more burn ticks and maybe a bomb placement, and this should be finished. And here he goes, finished. So 4 minutes, 25 seconds, 99 turns, and you can see here, Geomancer, MVP. We reflected all of those bombs back, which isn't reflected here, because basically, the boss is dealing damage to himself, and the Bogos basically just tanking up everything for our squad. So a really cool synergy that I felt like was worth swinging in and editing this part into the video. Now, if we just go into those champions just to briefly explain how that's happening, um, with Yumiko, she basically places the Hex debuff, and then whenever an enemy tries to place debuffs on either this champion or an ally, has a 55% chance, bookable up to a extra chance here, of transferring those debuffs to a random enemy under a hex, which IE is going to be the bomb of the Dreadhorn. And this happens before any debuffs are placed on the initial target, but this will be brought down to a 30% chance, well, 50% chance once booked against bosses. So it's not all of the time, but being able to send them back 50-50 of the time in a comp like that is phenomenal, right? So, also with Marishka, um, on her passive, she basically places a block damage buff whenever an ally receives a bomb, which could definitely cut clutch you up throughout the course of the battle. Also, the full heals, the strengthen, the shields, and the turn meter fills, the cleanses of the burns, and the ally attack features could actually help out as well. And then a speed aura if you can't reach those speed thresholds. So, Marishka, phenomenal, right? Like, and also that passive where she can revive. Revives all dead allies with 50% HP and 75% turn meter whenever this champion is killed. So if she's killed and everybody else does as well from the dread bombs, brings them all back, use another reviver to bring Marishka back, and you'll be in that cycle of consistently reviving each other. So really cool synergies coming out from uh, Marishka Unbreakable here as well. Now, um, some other ones I wanted to note is from the Ogryn tribe, there's someone called Grazor. Now, these ones I don't have a lot of experience with because I don't have them, nor have I ever, like, used them at all. But basically, he comes through a let none pass, attacks all enemies, has a chance of placing a provoke. All right, we can't really do anything with that against the boss, but for the waves themselves, going to be very impactful. But he also places an increased resistance, like we mentioned with the Oella uh, prior to this. So, really nice to bring that in, paired with maybe decreased accuracy. We also have the healing bombardment, which increases the duration of ally buffs, but the main thing is an enemy max HP skill. And then a passive that works very similar to Vogoth in a sense, because whenever this champion is attacked, will heal all allies except himself by 70% of the damage received. The heal is only by 35% of the damage received from boss attacks, and the effect has no cooldowns. So this is very impactful, and once again, Bomber is the boss, not the Dread Bombs, therefore, you'll be getting the 70% value against them themselves. So you're kind of surplus healing, and maybe pairing this with a Vogoth could be a really cool strategy. So overall, you know, I think Drazzle definitely makes the list as somebody that can be uh, slotted into these teams. Now, last but not least, another one I don't have a lot of experience with, she's greyed out, will be Acrisia. Um, she's got max HP skills all around the board, right? And I can see her dealing a big amount of damage because she is a boss killer. Now, basically, attacks all enemies two times, places a shield on herself. The value of the shield is equal to 5% of this max HP for each critical hit. But it's the max HP part that we're focused on here. Really, really strong. Very similar to how we're implementing Newt, right? Um, also, max HP on this A1 with a drop defense value. And attacks one enemy two times, has a 100% chance once booked of stealing 100% of the target's turn meter. And this effect cannot be resisted with target with a higher max HP. So this bit here can be detrimental, very similar to Newt A1 with the turn meter depletion. Because you'll be dropping those dread bombs. But in the grand scheme of things, like a free turn cooldown to drop a dread bomb. Like for the amount that she's bringing to the table, I think is actually pretty astronomical. But you guys let me know, like, how many of you use Acrisia if you've got the luxury of having her uh, for your Bomb with the Dreadhorn teams? I'm interested to know. Because on paper, of course, like, she seems like she's going to come through and slaughter it. Um, I think one part here is decrease the damage taken from AoE attacks by 50%. Pretty decent from the attacks, right? And if a target's max HP is more than double this champion, which of course Bommel is going to be, this champion's attack will deal uh, damage based on the target's max HP instead of attack. So we should be self-sailing in the way that this passive works. So 
yeah, those were basically some honorable mentions I felt like should be put into this video. And then also the implementation of solo champions. Now, we didn't want to input them into this video because we've kind of done that in the past. And if you guys do want to see that video, I'll leave it in the description below. Or if you guys do want to head over to hellhades.com, which I'll show you briefly now. So we just go screen capture. Three, two, one, and boom. So we basically got a designated page showcasing all of the solo options, such as Crimson Helm. Helicath, Lady Annabelle being one of the best in the game. We've got Templar, Kaioku, Rathmatab. Like these champions are all viable. Some are gem cursed in order to solo it. But we really wanted to focus on basically like champions outside of that and using more of like a team basis rather than a solo basis. But of course, these will all be MVPs in their own rights. So with that all out of the way, let's head straight back into the video with nub rates. I guess like the last thing it would be guys is basically like although these champions are phenomenal right in their own rights none of them like can basically solo the boss right and obviously on this list today we actually wanted to not include any solo champions but what i'll do is i'll leave a video link in the description where myself and nubs actually broke down all of the solo options so if you are interested in those kind of strategies of course feel free to check out that video but we really wanted to highlight some champions outside of those like cheesy strategies of someone like lady annabelle and champions like that and um yeah, yeah, yeah. someone that basically can't do it anymore but let's not speak about that um <laughs> upsetting times but yeah so basically like the one shot strategies they need increased attack you need weakens you need um ally attack features or with the geomancers you need the vogoths and it's all of these blends together in those compositions is what makes them great and mm. i guess that's basically how i wanted to end this video off right Sounds good, man. Sounds uh, good. But before we, before we do that, like some something went up with that run, right? And I wasn't happy with that intro. It's, okay. it's getting to me. It's getting to me. Um, Yo, so it's it's, well, it's going to fail now. It's, the run's going to mess up. We're going to have to redo the entire video. Oh, editing not yeah, allowed. Yeah. Restart from, from minute one. Oh, is yeah. that is that is that what's on the line here? That's what's on the line. <laughs> yeah. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> See, so, um, anything else that you want to say about like bomber and stuff, like in terms of teams or? champions or what you're going to be using in the future uh oh good well i mean I, i'm likely myself honestly to be using just your nishak one shot with ally attack stuff i've got it built and it's just like bam full auto goes in and clears the i think it's like about a minute run or something it's very quick and reliable so mm -hmm. for me i've got it built until they do like doom tower nightmare or whatever you know i'm probably just going to use that one to be honest but i might yeah. try swing in a newt or something uh I don't know. I don't know if it's essential. I think Nishak and the, I think that strat you came up with is just like so good. If you got those champs, I don't yeah. know. Is there a reason to mix it up? I guess uh, like, unless, like uh... I guess the only reason that you would do it is like you see here, we've kind of removed one of the ally attacks from the role. We've now got yeah. a loot in instead. And basically it helps you out. Like I just manually did there for you guys. So you can see that you can now use any nuke you want. You could use nuke to like freeze the enemies. So if that's basically mm. what's giving you the, the problems, uh, you could do so like look boom 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 look at that damage we didn't even get any weakening on yet we haven't got a mm. speed tune but that's a lot of damage without any weakening and stuff yeah because yeah and that, that's just gonna scale up perfectly this is the issue HP. of new so basically like <laughs> but if because yeah. i've got a lot of accuracy on mine like we're dropping yeah. those dread bombs and it's starting to become tedious right and i actually gotcha. think we're, we're gonna lose this one now we're gonna Gosh, lose darn it, new yeah, see, I've got my new for uh, Hydra, so for Nightmare Hydra, in fact. So he needs like 400 accuracy. Yeah, see, stuff. look here, we might. Oh, man. Well, look we at all these him. bombs. We oh, you him. got him. There yeah. you go. But basically, yeah. like the speed tune yeah. that I was playing with before, I just changed it recently for like the Shogun's Grove. Hmm. Like, there's a different way where you basically you place the weakened and then new has no accuracy, so you're not dropping the dread bombs. And in yeah, that yeah. sense, it's, it goes a lot more smoother, but. Yeah, interesting. It's, it's, an, it's an interesting one. Another strategy that I was doing was like um, a reset with new, and then you just don't do any ally attacks at all. Because right now, without, if, I didn't even need the long bid there. He was like wasting my time. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I could have been another new kid there. <laughs> but yeah, guys, um, on that note, I guess that's going to be all for today's video. Make sure you guys head over to Nubbery's channel, description below. It'll say Mr. Nubby there. And. You know, go check out the options for Dark Fade that we really enjoy. And also, if we missed out any of your favorites, let us know in the comment section below. Um, yeah, have an amazing rest of your day. We'll catch you all on a video soon. Peace.